quick so I can get the rounds. <clears throat> Alright, part 10, MMX 100% speedrun tutorial. Today we cover the revisits. Revisit Penguin to get the heart and revisit Armored Armadillo to get the Hadouken. Um, the Penguin revisit is usually done after the eight maps, but can be done anytime after Chameleon. And if you do the route I recommend, that means it's dead last, because Chameleon is last. But if you do something like Waterless or Chameleon 3rd, you can do it earlier. Um, the only requisite is that you have Fire Wave to get into the, the igloo thing. You can see it in the middle of the screen that's got the heart in it. Um, other than that, the Sea Sting is highly recommended, but not required. So. Uh, let's dive right into it. There's a bunch of different strats you can use for this. Uh, I guess we'll start out with tornadoes. It's the easiest strat. It was the oldest strat, but it's also the slowest strat because, as we know, tornadoes have like a build-up time, and you could easily outrun your tornadoes and despawn them like so. So you have to sort of wait around. But the idea is pretty simple, you just tornado everything that gets in your way. Right? There's no real good way to go about it, because you do have to wait. Um, you, kinda, you can dash over these bunnies. This one that gets in your way here. And then this one as well. You might even want a tornado higher to uh, get that... Mosquito out of your face. You can do something like that. I mean, there's all sorts of options, but I wouldn't recommend tornadoes. They're far better strats. So, but the idea being, you just kind of tornado all the things that get in your way. Pretty simple. Uh, let's now swap to. I guess we'll just work our way from the front to the back. Uh, missiles. Not common, but certainly doable. Um, one missile takes out a block from these guys, and also one hit KOs pretty much everything else in this stage. So, if you really want to do missiles, it would look something like this. Um, you want to leave the bottom block from that first woodchuck guy so that you can use it to jump over him and his bunny friends. This jump here can be a little fickle, and this is going to be common in a lot of the a lot of the other strats. You can bonk the bunny. You, you can't jump from the base of the hill, so you're always going to sort of brush up against this corner, at least for a little bit. You want to minimize that. You can't make it from the base down here. You have to at least get on the slope a little bit. Um, if you do it properly, you'll get what's called a, a corner zip, I think they call it. And you'll kind of zip underneath the bunny as he's jumping over your head, but if you don't do it just right, you might take a hit from the bunny. So, you, something to be aware of in all of these different strats. Um, you know, just missile that guy as you go over the top, so it's like three missiles. One at the top here, one for that guy. Corner zip under the bunny and take out the mosquito as you go over the top. You can even shoot, like, this last mosquito if you really want to. Not the greatest strat. I mean, it's not really slower than any of the other strats, honestly. Yeah, Ben of War. They're up above the stream in the Collections tab. The first nine parts are all there. So, check them out. I also linked them on speedrun.com today. Under the guides portion. Um, let's see. Next, we... Oh, no. Whatever. Next we've got Sea Sting. This is the strat I use because I do the revisit early for stage select ideas. Um, so I do it like as soon as I get Fire Wave. So at this point I've only got like Sea Sting, Fire Wave, Ice, and Boomerangs. Um, the idea here is that you want to make sure that these spread out. So you want to do a full height dash jump and at the peak you shoot, a, you shoot your Sea Sting shot. It'll take out the bunny and it'll hit the top metal log or whatever it is and you want to hit it with another one 
from up close. And then one more to take out that guy. Um, something like this. With all of these strats, you kind of you want to make sure that you land on the left edge of this block. Otherwise, you're gonna have some problems where you crash into the the axe man here. So boop boop boop, and you can even just stay on C sting the whole time and get kind of a neat double kill. Um, another idea being, and this actually I should have mentioned this earlier. This idea can apply to all the runs as well, where you swap to Buster, and you can take out that bunny, and then use Buster for these last two mosquitoes. Which is pretty good, and this is this is how I do my revisit now. I'll do the sea sting shot to start. We'll let me take out that guy, so I don't have to worry about that corner zip I talked about, and uh, and that'll get you this far. So, sea sting, boom, 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 and then the buster. Um, Next up is Rolling Shield. This one was actually my favorite when I was doing the revisit last because I had Rolling Shield. Now I don't have Rolling Shield anymore, but this was a very cool strat for me. I used it for a long time. The idea being um, you can just drop a Rolling Shield on the ground and it takes out the bottom one of those logs so that you can do the same, same idea. But you can get a couple extra cool kills and then you can swap to Sea Sting for the double kill. If you want. Um, it's kind of hard to hit the mosquito over the second log guy with rolling shield, this one. So I would normally swap to sea sting. But now I guess if I was going to do it again, I'd probably just do the same thing where I swap to buster and kill the, uh, oops, and kill the, uh, the bunny that's guarding the corner there, that one and then just finish it out with Buster. But uh, you don't even need to kill this bunny. You can dash under him. So if you want, it's just like two rolling shields. And then lemons if you want to go that route. You gotta be mindful of this bunny. If, whether you're doing the, uh, the Buster strats or like the Sea Sting strats, you still have to be mindful of this bunny because this very last one, normally that drop won't affect you. I was just slow. He should go right over the top of you. But if you don't jump from the very edge of this log, this top set of logs here, you can either crash into the bunny if you didn't kill him, or if you use the Sea Sting for the double shot, you'll, you can potentially collect his drop, which is not good. So, this is what Rolling Shield looks like. This is the full Rolling Shield. It's a Sea Sting strat that I used to always use. And then the uh, Rolling Shield. Ah! Rolling Shield to Buster strat. Which is what I would probably do now if I was doing the reuse at last. Um, next, Fire Wave. You can use Fire Wave. Same idea. Just Fire Wave the top one and the, this guy that gets in your way. And then you can finish it up however you like. With Lemons again is probably what I'd recommend. I definitely recommend Lemons for the second half, regardless of what you do for this first portion. Because getting this bunny out of the way is pretty handy. You can achieve that, like, I, I do a weapon cancel here as I'm, uh, after I kill this guy, weapon cancel before the lemon shot. You can even do a couple lemons like that. There's tons of options, and then none of them are necessarily faster than the others. I already went over tornado. Um, the spark method is one that was very common for quite some time, and you might probably still see some runners doing it. The idea here is you need two sparks to, uh, take out one of these logs. It's the same idea as before. The key to the spark strat is that you have to shoot your sparks while you're dashing so that they're lower to the ground and they hit this this slope. See how it goes over the slope? But I'm just standing here 
if I'm dashing, it hits the slope and comes up at an angle. So it'll hit the bottom log. And then you can continue with however you want to finish it. Um, the cool thing about the spark strat is that you can actually shoot your sparks really early and they'll take out the mosquitoes. The easiest way is probably going to be tornadoes, but it's the slowest way, so I don't recommend to tornadoes. Um, outside of that, I think the rolling shield strat is really good. And, uh, with the cease thing. If you don't want to be bothered with too many weapon swaps, because that's just one swap to the left from rolling shield to cease thing. Yeah, I collected his drop. If that was ammo, that was bad. And that's just because... <laughs> Viral shark, I don't think so. <laughs> um, that's just because I left that first. There, I left these logs up here a little early. See, I collected it again. You want to get a nice... Uh, nice jump off the very end of this to make sure that you clear the bunny. Um, I guess there's also buster-only strats where you come in holding a charge and then you use a blue shot to take out the first couple enemies. You want to be careful with it because um, you can take out both of them, which is not good. You, you want to leave one of them to, to jump off of, right? But if I had to choose one for people to use, it would probably be the it'd be the rolling shield. And you don't need to bother, okay, with the rolling shield, you don't need to bother killing that bunny or that bunny. You could ignore both of those bunnies by just um, dashing underneath them. Like so. So that's what uh, that's what I'd recommend. If, you, if I had to pick one, but it's, it's entirely up to preference. They're all pretty much equally fast, except for tornadoes are obviously slower. And the sparks, I, do, I think, are a little slower because in the beginning you have to chain your dashes rather than doing dash jumps. Get sub-33 in uh, any percent. <laughs> Anyways, uh... See. Now that we've gotten through this first section, we enter the cave, which is very, very simple. Okay, let's just let's just do this right. Come on. This is the strat I do now. Okay, once we're here, um, we want to swap to sea sting and take out all these bats on the way down. Oh my god, I didn't make a safe state. What an idiot. So swap to sea sting here. I'm gonna take out this bat. None of these guys will drop stuff on your head that you have to worry about. So uh, we can take out this bat and then we just dash. We don't jump off this ledge, we just dash straight off. So take out the bat, dash off, and then I shoot all of these bats. You don't have to. You can ignore them all if you want. But I take them out. They can cause lag, but they can also cause a bunch of lag by dropping stuff. So it's up to you. I take them out, because bats are dumb. And you start charging your cease thing after the last bat here. I guess I leave one. I leave that one, but... Um, what you want to do once you get in the cave here, is you want to land on the very left edge of this ledge, so that you can cleanly jump over this rolling idiot. But you gotta be kinda quick, it's a little precise. Otherwise you'll crash into him. 
Um, the easiest way to do it is to just... You can do a wall kick over the top of him if you want. Yeah, you can only have three lemons on screen at a time, but you can fire more lemons if you're at the edge of the screen. Or if your lemons are going into an enemy. Um, where was I? Okay. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. So the fastest way is going to be to land on this edge and jump over him, and then pop your C sting right before you crash into that rolling guy. Pretty simple. But if you're afraid you're going to crash into this guy, if you're not very fast or, or accurate with your dash jumps, it's very possible. Like that. <laughs> and then pop your C sting. Oh, not early either. But if you start charging at that last bat, you should not have a problem having charge in time. So you don't crash into that guy. And the rest of the cave is sort of up to you. Go to the wall here. You can go to the wall here. You can go to the wall here. Your cease thing won't run out if you're fast until after you're past this last guy. So, again, full speed. Oops. Kick off the wall. Kick off the wall. Kick off the wall and then zigzag your way up here. Then you want to start another charge. Um, there's a couple other ideas. You can do the same things you did in the first penguin visit, where you do a slope jump here, and then a, this kick as well. Um, that's going to be a little faster than wall kicking every wall, and so thus that is what I do, but it's obviously a little more precise and not a very big time save, so it's not necessary, but it's faster if you want to learn it. Once you get to the top here, you want to start another charge, and then release it before you crash into that guy, and it's pretty simple. Just dash jumping your way through here. I'm going to clear this again. You can do the ledge jump, or slope jump to the top, or you can do your wall kick over the top. And then you want to swap to fire, and just simply jump up here and destroy that. And you're done. It's very, very simple. This thing makes everything easy. <laughs> and this is why we wait until we get C Sting to come back for the revisit. So, um, that's it for the Penguin revisit. Moving on to Armadillo revisits. Now, bear with me, this is going to be pretty boring <laughs> and repetitive. This is the the hardest part of the speedrun because it's so difficult to stay awake. Uh, <laughs> but it's critical that you don't miss any revisits. Now, I'm not going to cover a whole lot of the stage because I've covered it already in the uh, in the armadillo portion of this tutorial. But I will cover the sub tank. Now, if you hadn't gotten the booty, you can go for it again. Um, or if you, you had gotten it, then obviously you just ignore. Um, all of this and you just move on, right? Because you've already got the sub tank. Um, if you're not going for the booty at all, you can start charging, like, I don't know, here. Swap to cease to do not bust out the fire wave. Oh, I'm not on revisits. No wonder. Hold select if you're wondering when using the practice ROM to go to the revisits. So, you get, if you're not going for booty, just start charging early enough so that your C sting is ready when you get to the bats. And you can just go through everything, trigger this guy. Get your sub tank, but now you gotta be pretty fast getting out of here. Otherwise, you might get crushed. Um, if you are going for the booty a second time, 
Just uh, do do your booty attempt as normal, but make sure that when you fire your boomerang, that you hold the charge. Right? And it'll be ready. In time. Just in time. So you gotta be careful. It'll be ready before this guy will kill you. You don't have to, like, dodge him or anything. Also, when you're leaving after getting this sub tank, this guy's causing a lot of lag, so it can be beneficial to just do these dash jumps and try to limit your dust sprites rather than doing the long dashes with a bunch of dust sprites because they can add extra lag. So, um, either see Sting early if you're not doing the booty, or if you're doing the booty, just make sure that you hold your charge in case you don't get it. If you get it, obviously, you can just move on like a so. But if you don't get it, just make sure you're holding your charge so that you can have C-Sting ready in time to get through the more war. It's ready in plenty of time. And then do these short dash jumps through here to try to mitigate some of the lag. Again, I'm not going to cover the rest of this stage, um, just the very end, because I've already covered all of this. Oops, that's not the strat. So let's get to the revisit portion. Yay, everyone loves riding these carts over and over again. Now you should have already gotten the heart here. And the revisits are very simple. I mean, I've already covered all this, so I'm not gonna cover how to make the birds despawn. What I am going to cover is where to jump, which is right as the cart leaves the ramp. Um, and also what constitutes a visit. Now, this health capsule is what you're looking for, but you're not... If you just see the health capsule, you didn't go far enough, right? You need to see the area over here. Just like maybe where X's foot is, the closest one to the capsule. Because... Um, that's what constitutes a visit. This part has to appear on screen. You need to see the blue sky behind the capsule over in X's foot's general area. I'm not sure exactly which pixel it is, but it's about where the edge of the Hadoken capsule is once it spawns. And that's what you need to see. So it's better to be safe than sorry. Go a little further right, a little higher than you might think you need to, just to be sure. <clears throat> Because missing a visit is a catastrophe to your run. And you do not want that to happen. So, in order to get the Hadouken, you need to have collected all eight hearts, one in each stage, um, the four sub tanks from Mandrill Stage, Eagle Stage, Mammoth Stage, and here in Armadillo. Um, you need the boot castle from Penguin, the arm upgrade from Mammoth, the helmet upgrade from Eagle, and the armor upgrade from Chameleon. And all eight Mavericks have to be dead. And then you have to see this area where I'm standing a total of four times. And then on the fifth time, if you all the other prerequisites are required, or, or if all the other prerequisites are met, and you have full health, not subtanks. Your subtanks don't need anything in them. Just a full health bar, then the Hadouken capsule will spawn. For the previous four visits, you don't need anything. And that's why. When you come through here with armored to do armored armadillo stage, you want to make sure you see this, and that counts as your first visit. So then we come here, and we do three visits with deaths to restart at the checkpoint, rather than the beginning of the stage. And then the f that's four visits now, and then the fifth time uh, the capsule will be here. So. Um, in order to achieve these optimal deaths. Oh, and this is why we grab the extra life, because without the extra life from Chameleon stage, we would game over after our third revisit. So it's just, that's one, right? Um, I'm gonna make sure you count these right as well. That was pretty close, but I, I'm just, I know it was good because I saw the blue sky behind the, the behind the capsule. Ideally, 
you're getting the blue sky and then falling directly in the pit like this. And there's a decent visual cue that people use. I don't really use it, I just kind of go by feel. But it's this cloud in the background. Uh, I think it's this one. Not the one like right next to the cliff, but the smaller one that I'm shooting at out to the left. So you do a dash jump off this ledge. No, maybe it's not. Yeah, okay. Um, I guess it's the like the right edge of that cloud. You can press right or back back to the left. So you do a dash jump as the cart's leaving the ramp, and then you press left. I don't like this visual cue. People have told me about it, I've never really used it. This is something you don't want. This is going to lose time if you end up back on the cart. Yeah, if you press it in like the middle of the cloud, it's not good. Or the left side. I guess you'd have to be on the far right side of the cloud. Still doesn't seem good every time. Yeah, I think it's like between the clouds here. That's a pretty good cue. I guess. You just gotta find it. I'll find it for you. It's Yeah, it seems like it's in between those clouds. So you're holding right, and then you turn around and press left. So that you don't end up in the door. Because ending up in the door is, is worse than missing a visit. Well, it's about the same as missing a visit. Because you have to do the whole stage over again. Um, but yeah, ideally you see that spot where the capsule would spawn, and you fall in the pit and die without landing on the ledge. Landing on the ledge isn't like a total disaster, but um, it's not. You don't want to do that if you can avoid it. It's obviously faster to go straight in the pit. If you do land on the le on the edge, whatever, just dash off and go in the pit. Make sure you don't get shoved into the door by the cart or something stupid. But the idea, okay, you leave right as the ramp is leaving, and you jump off right as the cart is leaving the ramp here. You jump off, get your visit, fall in the pit. Um, so that's two. I gotta do it one more time with a death. And then uh, the next time the capsule will be there, so. Again, all of this section is covered in the Dillo portion of my tutorial. If you're curious about how to despawn these birds or whatever, go check that one out if you haven't already. Um, that one was questionable. So, this time, the capsule should be there if that last visit was good. I guess we'll find out. And again, this is this is the same. Everything's the same over and over again. Three three deaths, and then on the fourth time, the fourth revisit, the capsule. Oh, why did I go for a death? The capsule should be here, and it's not because I'm a buffoon. Yeah, I missed I missed the visit. I should have extra life, infinite lives in the practice room. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> one more time, because I missed my last visit like a buffoon. But, uh, for the last visit, it's a little different cue because now obviously you're not jumping into the pit. You need to get up to the ledge. So, see, there's. <coughs> Excuse me. There's the goal our capsule. So just like look at that little nub on the bottom left of the capsule, that's kind of the idea of where you want to see when you're doing your revisits. That little gray part that sticks out on the left side at the bottom. So, um, But as far as like when to jump off the cart, what I do is I'll move all the way out to the right of the cart, Oops. and then as soon as it starts to fall, like after it's crested and starts to fall, just do a dash jump all the way to the wall, and then one dash kick will get you up to the top. Pretty simple. And then obviously.
obviously, you know, hold start for text, all that jazz. Get your Hadouken. And now you have 100% and you can move on to the Sigma stages, which we will cover in the next part of the tutorial. But uh, that's it for this portion. Fairly short, I know, but uh, not a whole lot going on here that wasn't already covered. I guess the primary part was the penguin section. But uh, exit the stage with your escape unit. And we move on to the Sigma Fortress. So, next time we'll cover Sigma 1. And we'll get into the real tough part of the speedrun. I mean, I guess it's all kind of... It depends. Where the casual um, difficulty spikes, but... In the speedrun, there's, there's difficult sections all over the run. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace!